we've been working on uh, the archaeology and many of the sites we've been working on in the Northern Isles, as all in Shetland, have had uh, coastal erosion elements. Uh, and we've been working there for some 30 years now. Um, uh, and that's been within the university sector. Uh, Rausay itself is an island which is extremely rich in archaeology. A uh, huge amount of uh, excavation work was carried out in the 1930s. Uh, funded by the, with, with the personal fortune of uh, uh, a whiskey magnet, uh, a certain water grant. And archaeologists, including Gordon Child, uh, worked uh, uh, extensively uh, ac <laughs> across uh, elements of, of Rousey, some of which were coastal erosion sites, uh, and these included uh, the site of uh, uh, Mid Howe and uh, um, the uh, the associated chambered cairn at Midhow, just 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 along from it. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, one site in particular. This is a site that we're currently working on, a site called uh, uh, Swandra. And uh, what uh, uh, we're confronted with uh, many sites in Orkney is their longevity of settlement, their long time frames that they have, and this has so many possibilities for research in being able to look at changes in supplement patterns over uh, um, uh, 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 and with the long dur duration of supplement, uh, uh, we, we were able to see um, the uh, variation in uh, uh, the uh, uh, we, we might see with climate change in terms of procurement of resources, um, in, in, in terms of both the uh, land and the sea. So uh, that, that's a little bit of a background. Um, and what I really thought was, uh, would be useful is to actually look at the contributions perhaps that the university sector can make to uh, the problem of uh, understanding coastal, coastal erosion uh, sites and um, uh, 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 give that a little bit of a fact wave. Rause is, you can see mainland Orkney, the largest of the Orkney Islands, and just to the top, um, uh, just off the top there uh, you, is the island of Rouse before you, you come to the Northern Isles of, 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 uh, um, of San Day and, and West Jay. Uh, the, the, you can see the smallest island with a brown centre to it. That's the island uh, of Rouse. And uh, uh, I just marked on uh, the site of, of, of uh, uh, Midhow. There's a, 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 another settlement site which is a, a stone's throw away uh, from, from Midhow, which is another Brock site, uh, the site of uh, uh, South Howe. And that particular site, one minute, that, there we are, that, that particular site um, has a duration of settlement from the Iron Age all the way through to. Uh, clearances that take place in the 19th century. So an, in an incredible duration. We have, we have uh, 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 late Norse buildings that have been exposed in, in the coasts there. And the rocks itself, you can see tr truncated. This is the outer wall face. This, in fact, is the entrance going through. And you can, you can see part of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the the lens that would have held flags going across the entrance way uh, there. So you see a cross section of the walling with just the outer face there that's been eroded away. Uh, this is all wave cut there. Swandro is a huge contrast to this particular site. Uh, Swandro itself um, 
has a different form of erosion. Uh, what you see there is a boulder beach. Um, and there's a huge amount of destruction associated with the movement with high energy in storms of that boulder, boulder beach. And if you were to take the boulders off here, what one would see is a series of wave cup terraces. So what we're left with is an archaeological sequence, uh, and, and this is to one side, and you can see here this is a chamber two, an earthen chamber two, and you can see the case for walling, this, the, 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 the stepping um, uh, coming through. No, this is part of survival, but you do get, a, I think, a sense of the, the way that the sea has come in and scraped off to uh, surfaces. Um, and, and, and what we see is a degree of protection um, with flags and, and, and curbing. Um, now this, this particular uh, uh, slide was taken when we excavated that site of, uh, and just by clearing the top and recording uh, it was backfilled and we re um, and uh, after a, a gap of three years we reopened it this year to see how much destruction has, uh, has occurred uh, and we're seeing, absolutely, uh, we're seeing significant change occurring so, so we've got a very active uh, source of, of erosion from um, just the day-to-day -day tidal movements. When you add in the big storm events that occur occasionally, uh, you, you can, it's very difficult to predict the combination of, of a storm event and tide, the, 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 with the tides in the right direction, the wind, etc. But when those big events do occur, then the destruction is going to be far greater. So we're on a ticking time bomb. Uh, there's a constant attrition and this tick, 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 waiting for the big storm events. Um, this is the Iron Age settlement just to the side of the Chamber 2, and there's the, 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 the casement walling of the Chamber 2. Uh, this, this is from this year. And you can see, um, you can see some of the, 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 the terracing quite clearly. Uh, here, uh, we've got a line there, with, um, and the sea's taken away the rest of that level. Uh, and, and underneath that, we've, we've got yet another building phase. Uh, this particular building down here dates to uh, around about the first century BC through to the first century AD. And then we've got another, another wave cut test. We've got a little boundary coming through here. And here we've got. Uh, late Bronze Age, early Iron Age pottery, flat rimmed uh, pottery coming coming up. So you, this gives you an idea uh, as you climb these terraces, you're quite literally stepping through time. Uh, there's a close up of that lower building. Uh, you, this, in fact, is another. Uh, it, it's missing some of the, the superstructure that, 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 that was there. We've estimated that identical. Uh, construction uh, at, uh, on the site of Shetland, the site of the old Scatnaz in the Iron Age village. And this is an oven to the side of this big hut. Uh, and this is, the, 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 this is where the sea has come in and scoured <laughs> uh, the, that, 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 that building um, literally in half. So, um, what then can the university sector provide? It can provide a research-led agenda. Um, by taking a number of years, we, uh, we, 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 can do, we, we, we can actually look at big research questions. We can add to the archaeological understanding. Um, we're able to develop new methodologies um, with application uh, 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 of, uh, of grants and uh, uh, we can feed both the uh, research outcomes of corporate research and the outcomes of these methodologies into our teaching programs uh, which is creating and informing 
the next generation of archaeologists. So, it, 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 and, it, and it's that empowerment, that knowledge, that, that, that we can bring um, awareness through and influence the archaeological agenda. This, at the same time, creates awareness and public awareness. And we mustn't forget the size of that. That is still a vital component. And, again, it has an effect on the local population. Uh, it provides a sense of belonging and cultural inheritance. Uh, this is uh, some of the uh, 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 new techniques, the use of, of scanning, uh, uh, of, of scanners to be able to give uh, a, a data cloud uh, where one can actually look at the site in, in different perspectives, just to be, to be able to more or less uh, uh, construct a view share, just to almost walk through this, the three-dimensional element. Uh, this, this was an attempt, the first attempt that we, we did with the um, the, the, the scans, and there you can see um, a, a photograph taken from a, a kite of the chamber too. So you've got different view shapes from the three-dimensional uh, scanner there. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Wilson um, um, has brought, brought up this year a number of different forms of scanner. So we've got um, some high-resolution um, uh, data to compare with that from uh, a series of different forms. This is the chamber two this year. Uh, we've lost an awful lot of material for the lower, lower, lower um, the, uh, uh, the lower uh, uh, retainment down here and, and also from here. And not only have we seen the sea scaring out, uh, but there's a problem that the chamber two uh, that we didn't quite realise uh, when we first excavated because it was a very dry summer. Uh, this was quite a wet summer. And uh, what we're seeing is both the chamber two and parts of the Arnese site are actually along a spring line, a freshwater spring line. So you've also got the washing out of material as well as the, uh, the, the sea coming in uh, and being aggressive. Uh, being, a, uh, <laughs> being a department that specializes within archaeological sciences is a huge advantage to me personally because we're able to call on different expertise within the department. Uh, for example, uh, here we've got some of the hearts that we found being dated using uh, archaeomagnetic dating. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Kathy Batt. Uh, the advent of drones and the ability to take photographs uh, in controlled conditions um, is a huge bonus uh, that we're seeing uh, many parties taking uh, on board. And this is a relatively cost-effective way of being able to record. And with the new health and safety conditions, the days of our photographic towers are long gone, I fear. Uh, some of the, the constructions that I went up in my youth uh, would never, never uh, be erected today. Uh, um, I, I think I'd be uh, uh, in, in, in with Her Majesty's pleasure if I constructed anything like that again. Uh, but the ability to see things from the air and different perspectives to get details of buildings and how those buildings sit within the local environment and how the, sit, the, how the site itself sits within the settlement mound. Uh, we've got the rest of the mound for the chamber head coming through there. And on the far side, you can see the, 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 the Norse log house, if you look carefully, some of the stonework and the banks coming through. So you can see you, you, you can actually see the landscape setting of that erosion. Uh, the other technique that we've been exploring is, 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 again, this is the development of digital cameras, being able to take pictures remotely, um, is, is to use the camera attached to a pole and having that remote control, being able to, again, record the archaeology. And again, you can use this data in, uh, to, to, to actually create, create uh, three-dimensional, put them into three-dimensional modeling software. Uh, 
as as was said, the importance of of being able to communicate this information is vital, uh, and to gain public awareness. Uh, so trying to publicise it uh, um, to to uh, the uh, outside world is vitally important. Uh, to attract visitors to the site, uh, we've we've flooded uh, this to the local. Uh, uh, ferry office and to the ferry itself and the tourist office and uh, an extremely successful uh, way of getting uh, visitors in a managed way so they don't go through the, the farmyard and upset the farmer they, they, they have a, a direction to the site uh, and, and, and the site is, is in a, a quite a remote location so it, 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 it does take uh, the uh, 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 the, the stronger willed uh, visitor to, to, to come. Uh, but it, it, we've, we've found that we've had in a, a, a large number of international visitors, and, and many have just come to the island to actually see the excavation, to actually uh, look, uh, uh, visit the site. Um, so, in attracting visitors, are very important to the local economy. Uh, this is a group of American visitors from the the Association of American Archaeologists who came to visit. Uh, empowering school children, very, very important um, visits from the school and also uh, the work that uh, Jane Downs uh, uh, has, has been doing over the years uh, with her, her research at Student Housing uh, Care and, uh, and um, the work that uh, uh, Dan Lee is, is, is taking up the challenge, of, uh, uh, um, uh, not just in Orkney, but across Scotland with, with community engagement, vitally important. And this, uh, uh, and creating awareness of the archaeology is just so important. So, just to sum up, when our teaching and learning outcomes, um, uh, research led, uh, allowing experiment mental work, and world learning uh, process for teaching. Uh, the idea of development of, of, of the student uh, from the first year uh, and bringing them back, giving them more responsibilities, uh, an idea of spiral learning so that they're, they're, they're getting more and more uh, skills and um, fostering them through to dissertations, maybe to, to then go on to take masters and, uh, and ultimately uh, perhaps a PhD program, and uh, uh, what we're doing is also giving them real-world learning, and I think that is important because these are the people who are going to take the torch into the future, and this all umbrellas and networks through with community outreach, reach, and we're seeing a dissemination of 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 the work and. We're also answering key important questions about uh, development of a site, uh, its, its adaptation to, to events, maybe it's climate change, maybe it's events like uh, the uh, uh, arrival of Scandinavian peoples in the late Iron Age, at the end of the, the Pictish period, that, that cultural interface, what happens? at those particular points. What happens at the point of Scottification, for example, uh, when, when the islands are uh, no, no longer Scandinavian, but we see the Scots coming, coming in. So uh, those are the points I'd like to leave you with. And uh, I, th I think uh, the, the important thing uh, to remember is uh, that uh, uh, the university sector could have an important role in working with, with other groups and looking, uh, 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 as I said, at uh, 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 as, as sites, uh, especially in this concept of a longer time frame of research to be able to come back and reflect on the archaeology. So rather than going in and being able just to, to salvage what one can, to actually spend a number of years reflecting on the archaeology and, and, and pulling as much data out of it and responding to that particular site.
Thank you.